Hello and welcome in today's episode. I'm Danon and this is Conan Exiles. In the beginning of this video, I would like to say thank you for such a warm welcome with our last episode and also thank our new subscribers. I want you to know that you guys are my motivation to work with these videos. Thank you. So, getting back to what we've been doing, we have started just like usual by getting some resources we can use later on. And since we have few stone nodes and trees around our base, it is a good opportunity to A. Clear out the area for a near future building and B. Collect what we need for actual building. Our mission for today is to do a few things. Namely, get our crafting stations ready for any form of operation as well as try and obtain some brimstone but even though it is not required now, we will have to have a lot of it at hand somewhere around mid-game for pretty much any slightly more advanced technologies, including building and many items. Up next is my first try to fight with hyenas, which, to be honest, are a bit tougher than I remember. My first mistake in this case was the fact that I have been using a slow two-handed weapon and as you have just seen, it did not really help in fight against nimble enemies, but we will change this quite soon. We cannot let this sleep as most enemies later on will not be as predictable and they will bite way harder than hyenas ever could. I have used this situation to replenish some of our basic resources but also have started to gather the iron which even though is not present in great quantity around here was still enough to get us going. We will need a lot of it. Some iron nodes are well hidden around here, therefore we have to find most of them and mine them on the spot. This is not the greatest source of iron that we can visit, but it is on our way, so why not use it? We have also used the climbing ability, which, believe me or not, we will be abusing later on in the game. It is a very useful skill to efficiently climb down the elevation. By efficiently, I really mean just jumping down the tall hill slash mountain that you have visited that you cannot be bothered to backtrack in order to go back where you came from, so just jump down and cling onto the wall. Job done. Right at this moment, we have learned how to craft my actual most favorite weapon. Forget the two-handed sword. Daggers are the she. We will be using them as main weapon from now on, since the ability to make an enemy bleed is very helpful in a fight. I will elaborate more on this later on. Also, while we were learning how to craft daggers, we have learned recipes for few other items, namely iron skinning knife, which we can't craft just yet, and something that will be extremely helpful once we will start making it, healing wraps. This will be used a lot. Next in the queue of things to do was to check the battle pass tab and see if we were making any progress. We had a reward to claim, which is just a bit of experience point that are added to your battle pass progress and it pretty much works the same as in other games. You advance to new levels, you get new rewards. This is a great example on how daggers work. They are extremely effective, as you can stack the bleeding effect up to 20, meaning that you don't even have to finish the enemy yourself, as bleeding effect will do it for you. Take note of how I don't even bother finishing these hyenas, as we had enough bleeding effect stacked. This is an amazing tool to decrease the number of times required to repair your weapon, but on the other hand, it feels like daggers have less durability than other weapons. Technically you can offset this by just allowing the bleed effect to work its magic. Oh. 
As we were trying to find our way towards the Brimstone Cave, we have spotted something I call an aggressive gazelle. Just whatever. But in fact, its name is Kudo, and they are not the hardest creatures to clash with. After gathering so much stuff, I had to come back home and drop it off so we can gather more resources. However, I have noticed a big creature roaming on the island, extremely close to our home. It was apparently a black kappa, and I somewhat have remembered that they can drop rare loot, which obviously has triggered an inner rat in me to go and get this loot, but I have quickly calculated that it will need a max of 2 hits on me to obliterate me. Well, from my side, it would be a struggle to bring him down with the equipment we had at the moment. This is also the moment I have already thought we could start relocating, because I had the genuine feel of him just coming over to us and ruining whatever we have built so far. On our way back to the Brimstone Cave, I have started fighting some antelopes to obtain additional hide, when I have noticed that slaying them adds on to a progress of a challenge for Battle Pass, meaning naturally I had to finish this mission as I was extremely curious to see how the Battle Pass system works. Finishing this quest won't happen for now, but it will materialize later on. Finally, we have managed to get to our first brimstone mine when I have heard an arrow landing right next to me. This could only mean one thing. But there are exiles here, but I just needed to figure out where they actually are. And here we go, 3 versus 1. This might actually unfold in one of two ways. I outsmart them and fight one by one, or just go full retard mode and see what happens. This is somewhat cheating, but I couldn't just not use this opportunity to get rid of at least one of them. I never wanted to be here. Next was the archer herself. She did not deal much damage, but she could still mess us up in the least expected moment if we just left her here. The last one was the one I had to be the most careful for, as she also had daggers on her. It worked both ways. We can start leading effect, and they can do so as well, meaning if I'm not careful, this might end rather abruptly, leaving me to travel half a map just to pick my stuff up. Anyways, we have ventured inside the cave and quickly proceeded to mine all of the brimstone nodes on our way. There was quite a few of them on the way down, deeper into the cave. This is the moment I have realized we can craft bandages that could heal a big chunk of our life. We will definitely need quite a few of these, since this cave is filled with exiles that tend to fight in a group against you, so once I have reminded myself how simple they are to make, I have left from the cave and started gathering plant fiber that we will need to make some health products. Unfortunately, there is a big chunk of footage missing, as when I had to make a break, I came back shortly after thinking that mm, the recording is on. But you didn't lose much, it was just a wave of constant fighting with exiles until we got to the end of the cave and fought with this area's strongest exile called Kaim of Azura. 
We have also got a few pieces of equipment from him and other exiles as well, as mined all the remaining brimstone nodes in this area. Once we have left from the cave, some antelopes have respawned and as you remember, we need them to finish our battle pass challenge, so I started hunting these poor creatures. Once we have finished the challenge, we have been given the access to first level reward, however we couldn't claim it as we didn't have the battle pass purchased. I had a little bit of a hesitant moment if I shall do it, so I left it for the time being. This is also a moment when I have became confused. I thought I will cut it out of the video, but please, take a look at my dumbass trying to find out rewards under Ancestral Knowledge. And if you didn't get it just yet, I was searching for rewards I haven't had since I couldn't claim them due to the battle pass that was not purchased. Duh. Then, it was that time again. Come home and sort out all of the goods that we have obtained, when I have decided to decorate the house with previously collected antelope's head as a trophy. I think we will collect quite a few of them. What I definitely want in either this shelter, or any of the other ones we will build in the future, is to have a wall full of trophies to somewhat immortalize our adventures in a visual form. And before we have ventured out once again, I have spotted weird mushrooms. I bet they will be used for some poison recipe later on, so I might as well grab some of them now. I couldn't actually believe in how many of them were growing in one spot. This makes one thing nearly certain, that whatever recipes they are used for, we will need tons of them. Closer to an end of this session, I have decided to finally place the furnace so we could smelt all of the obtained iron as we will need a lot of it for the foreseeable future. It will be useful to make some bricks as well, but this is not our problem for now. Once we got the furnace, we needed to drop some iron and fuel to start the smelting process. Technically we will need few furnaces, but one for now will suffice. What I love in games is when you can pause your gameplay and just stare into the background to see beautiful sights. Just like this dark night sky filled with thousands of bright stars. Next on the list was Tanner's table, which would come in handy when we would be running low on hide, as with help of it we could turn hyena's pelt or reptile hide into raw hide that we could then turn into one of the craftable items just like armor. While we were building, I thought why not build a better fireplace that would make this place feel more like home rather than a barren location, so that is what happened next. Most of the stuff from our campfire has been transferred into the fireplace so we could immediately start using it, or just drop our food to be cooked next time when we come around. 
Another thing that I really wanted to accomplish during this session was to get a tannery so we could process all of our hides into leather that then could be integrated to form specific armor sets. Don't worry, we'll craft them together. We needed a lot of tree bark as one of key components to craft the tannery as well as the main resource to work with leather, meaning we had to go and get it. Once we had enough, it was time to place it in our shelter so we could have it ready when we need it. And of course, Conan Exiles never makes it easy if you want to place it just like you want it. We could start using it now, however, first armor I want to craft does not require leather. Instead, it needs just the hide itself, so we will drop just a little of hide in there for now. Right after, Armorer's Workbench was the priority, as we could craft our first armor to boost our battle endurance. We also had a quick glance at what we can craft. When it comes down to armor crafting, I always go for the basic ones first, as they are not particularly nice to look at, but they bear good qualities just like the light armor you could see being crafted in here. This one gives us greater carry capacity, which for now would be amazing since we don't have a horse or a follower just yet. Also, I can get them out the way for my collection. Alright, let's see our first Adidas tracksuit in action. How does it look? Meh, basic, just like expected, but hey, it is a full set finally, so that is a bonus. However, uh, fiber clubs with medium helmet had more defense rating than this whole set. Okay, forget the fashion show, we had some knowledge points to spend, so we went ahead and learned the large chest, followed by savage armors of course, then Novice Saddle Maker, which will be required for us to make saddles for our horses. Journeyman Mason to build second tier constructions, Blunted Javelin to knock out exiles that we would like to train for ourselves, Dried Preserves to prolong the spoilage time of some of our food, Grinder, which will be very useful, mostly for alchemy and cooking recipes. Fisher, of course, to catch fish nearby our home, so we are not 100% reliant on meat we gather. Peasant, to allow us to plant seeds that we have obtained through our journey, which gives us an opportunity to farm them at our home, instead of venturing into the world to harvest them. And elevators, for obvious reasons, which will be quite useful in the future. We finally have been visited by the sandstorm, which feels like it doesn't appear so many times like in the past. We needed some light, therefore we will place four of them around here. This will give us ability to finally see within our house at night without need of a torch. Right. Considering we had an access to Battle Pass now, we have claimed whatever rewards we have gained, as I really wanted to get the first armor that was way different to all the others I have seen so far. And for the end of this session we needed Carpenter's Bench, which might not be so useful now, but its time is slowly approaching. We can also craft elevators in here, so it is good to have it ready to work. The 
Last crafting station for today is the artisan table, so we could craft large cupboards to hoard all of our stuff. <laughs> I like to use it especially for armor collection. Anyways, this is it for now, and I will catch you in the next one. Danon, out.